So since we've gotten the news of Logic Pro coming to iPad, it's brought a lot of desktop users and YouTubers into the space and rightfully y'all have a lot of questions and I've also seen some misinformation being spread around. So I wanna answer a few questions that'll hopefully clear things up, give you a better understanding of what iOS and iPad music production is all about, what it can do, etc. So first of all, welcome. I hope you enjoy iPad music production being a new normal for you. And for the latest tips, tricks, news, updates, and more, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you find this video useful, please hit the like button. And if you don't, just hit the dislike button. Let me know you didn't like it. So the first thing that I've seen people kind of be confused about is this concept of plugins on iPad. And yeah, Logic Pro will ship with like 100 plugins, it says, but it still has a bigger ecosystem on iPad in general, similar to that of desktop, actually pretty much the same. So we have a plugin format called Audio Unit Version 3 or AUV3. And this is very similar to what we have on Mac called Audio Unit. And with the plugins, we then have three subcategories of an audio unit version three. The first one would be MIDI Effects AU, which produce no sound and are pretty much MIDI controller type of apps. So this is where your scalar control would come in or Akatron step sequencer, tonality, etc. These are really meant to tell the MIDI what to do. They almost act as an instrument or a controller of some sort. And for the next one, we have AU instruments, which contain sounds that you actually play. So for instance, this would be your pure synth platinum, piano tech, etc. On desktop, think Omnisphere, Nexus, that kind of stuff. And for the next and final category, we've got audio unit effects, which are what your effects such as delays, EQs, compression, etc. are. Think Fab Filter, Event Tide, etc. And if you own Logic Pro on a Mac, you can already see all three of these things at play. We've got the MIDI Effects AU here. We've got our AU Instrument here. And we've got our AU Effects here. Exact same concept on iOS. And you might be wondering what the ecosystem of our plugins actually is. How many plugins do we actually have available? Well, we've got hundreds, if not thousands of plugins available in the audio unit format. I don't have a comprehensive list, but the most recent big addition would be Piano Tech. And this is a one-to-one -one port from the desktop version. And it even comes with a one-to-one -one port price. But the good news is if you buy a license for one, you're buying a license for both. We also have Pearson Platinum, which is a very similar port to that of desktop. We also have Sampletron. We've also got the uh, IK Multimedia Organ, the B3X Hammond. I don't want to butcher that name, so I'll put it up on the screen right now. But yeah, we've got a lot of nice plugins that are also available on desktop that we've got them on iOS as well. And you probably are wondering then, do your licenses transfer over? Sometimes, but not usually. So if you buy a license, for instance, for Pure Synth Platinum for iOS, that license is not gonna transfer over to desktop. And if you were to buy a license for say, Sampletron for iOS, it also isn't gonna transfer over to desktop and vice versa. If you were to buy a Fab Filter plugin or bundle on desktop, it's not transferring to iPad either. So you gotta be very mindful of that. And I would say buy strategically. So if you own both platforms, you're gonna have to decide if it's worth investing in some of the same plugins. Again, I feel that it is. I've got FabFilter on the Mac as well as the iPad, but for some people, they prefer to just do everything on the iPad because it's cheaper and it gives them that touch tactile feel. And other people would rather just noodle around on their iPad, send the stuff to desktop, do their serious stuff there. I don't really think there's a wrong answer here, but just be mindful that most things, most licenses are not going to be buy one place, get them both places. You will usually have to buy a license for each separate platform. And to give you all a quick understanding of what plugins aren't available currently, the big stuff uh, would be like contact. We don't have contact available on iOS. We do have Decent Sampler, which is really nice, and it can 
take on some of the duties that a contact would and you can go to like pianobook.co.uk and download some great libraries from there and that can kind of hold you over we also have other plugins that have pretty nice sample packs within them so we aren't dealing with scarcity but we don't have contact so none of the thing that runs on contact is going to work on ios we also don't have spectrosonics yet so no omnisphere no trillion no keyscape however if you do like those plugins or you own them go ahead and reach out to spectrosonics and let them know that you would like to see them same with contact let them know that you want to see contact on ios and with that said we don't have any of the rest of the native instruments collections either nothing from output so no arcade and i could keep going down this list but there is a lot of stuff that's just not available so no arturia um no cherry audio stuff we do have other synths that can stand in though for those items so we've got like moog model d model 15 and a lot of stuff that is made from indie developers that really get you in the ballpark or even better than some of these other apps would on desktop they're just from unheard of developers for desktop people but there's some really incredible stuff available so i implore you to check it out or ask about something in the comments section and i or one of the other ipad users who are knowledgeable will be sure to help you out and I don't want to dwell on all that too long, but you might be wondering, since we have all these plugins speaking outside of Logic Pro for iPad, can the iPad be used for serious music production? The answer to that is simply yes. And I don't mean this from a humble, you can make music with anything kind of stance. I mean, seriously, that iPad is more powerful than any other piece of hardware that's not an actual computer. This includes the MPC standalone. This includes Machine Plus. Any device that you're thinking of in the hardware space, the iPad is many times more powerful than it more than likely. And you'd be surprised at how much is actually produced or started on an iPhone or iPad. We have huge sample libraries and very powerful sequencers and groove boxes that really allow you to get things done. A couple of apps that stand out to me that most people who come to the ecosystem like would be AUM, which is probably the best mixer of all time. You can create kind of a dollless environment with its powerful nodes, blending MIDI effects to control your MIDI instruments and then mixing them through your audio unit effects. So you can create some really incredible stuff seen some great setups there loopy pro which is in my opinion the best looper of all time that's hardware software or anything else it's an incredible looper and it's very fair price to get into a lot of fun too it's kind of got some of the modular aspects of aum the mixer i just spoke on but it's got a more audio and loop based workflow very powerful so many things that you can do and i think that it is incredible We've also got Beatmaker 3, which is based on the machine, the hardware. And in many ways, it's more powerful than the machine plus, for instance, because you can host your plugins there and all that kind of stuff directly on it. And with something like the iPad mini, for instance, you're literally taking like an MPC or a machine everywhere on the go with you. It's incredibly powerful. It can do MIDI editing. It can do sequencing. It can do arranging. It, you can mix in it. I mean, there's so many things you can do with an app like Beatmaker 3 that really carries further for a lot of people than what you can actually do on a machine. And then we've got Drambo, which is based on the Octatron. And this thing can do everything. It's incredible. It's a great sequencer. It's also a modular powerhouse where you can build your own modular rack systems. It's MIDI assignability is incredible. So many things you can do with it. I mean, if you can imagine it, you can probably pull it off in Drambo. And then we've got Koala, which is akin to an SP404. Very simple, lightweight workflow. You can really chop samples and sequence in it. Put effects on things. It's just really nice. It's a very smooth environment. It supports all the most modern things such as drag and drop and building kits and whatnot so very nice app very lightweight very convenient and there are others but i'm going to leave it there in order to keep the time of this video relatively short the next question that i've seen a little misinformation about is can you use an audio interface or like a usb microphone absolutely right now as i speak i'm running a symphony desktop via a earthworks microphone directly into the ipad 
So without a hub or anything, I'm going directly into the iPad. So yes, you can do this with high end interfaces like the one I'm using right now, the Symphony desktop, all the way down to entry level, uh, Focusrite 2i2s, which I also have and think is a great interface for the price. And you can use a bunch of interfaces in between. One of my favorite on the go at the moment is the mixer face, which has its own rechargeable battery on board. So I'm able to use it wherever without draining my iPad's battery. And one thing to keep in mind is that if your interface can be powered by the USB bus on your computer, it will likely also be able to be powered by your USB-C port on your iPad. So if you don't need power for it there, then you won't need power for it here more than likely. All good news there. USB mics, it's the same. I've used the Lewis, he used the Earthworks Icon USB. Had no issues whatsoever with either of those mics. So the key to everything with these interfaces and microphones is just to make sure that they are class compliant and that they don't need any special drivers. That's really the key to everything. If you are able to run your interface, without it needing special drivers just to run, right? So I'm not talking like the uh, RME stuff where you've got the mixer as an option. I mean, like literally if it needs a special driver to run, which most stuff doesn't nowadays, then you should be good. And the next question I see some confusion about is, can you use MIDI controllers with an iPad and how do you hook them up? To answer that question, yes, you absolutely can use MIDI controllers, but you should know that there's a little bit of a caveat. So. Some MIDI controllers need special drivers for to at least connect to a computer. So like, for instance, the complete control will work with an iPad, but your playhead buttons, for instance, won't work. You know, your play stop and all that does not work with iPad in its current form. That only works on a computer. Now, I don't know if a script or something like that could solve it, but that is the case with that. But moving on, most MIDI controllers that are class compliant are going to work perfectly fine. The Novation stuff, for instance, you're able to assign anything that you want. Arturia, I believe it's the same. Everything should work fine. And in order to connect them, uh, there's a few ways you could do this. One way is to plug it into the iPad via a USB cable directly into the iPad, or you could use a hub. And again, if the controller runs on bus power, meaning that you don't have to plug it into a wall, the iPad should also be able to power it up just fine. Another way to hook them up is via Bluetooth, and you can either use a keyboard that has Bluetooth on board, like the X key Air, or you can use a MIDI Bluetooth adapter, such as one from Witty or Yamaha, and this will let you connect your MIDI controller via Bluetooth directly to your iPad wirelessly. This is my preferred workflow personally. I think uh, having a wireless workflow just makes the iPad much better, much smoother overall, but there's no wrong way to do it. And what about sample packs? Will iPad work with your various sample packs? Yes, iPad supports sample packs the same way that your computer does. So if you have WAV files, you can bring them over to your iPad and open them via the Files app. Or if you want a more premium experience, I recommend using Sample Crate where you can preview them, build a kit, and drag and drop them into apps such as Koala. Hopefully Logic for iPad will support this workflow functionality as well. But yes, in any case, you can bring over your sample kits and be able to work with them on iPad. So hopefully that answers some of your questions or concerns about the iPad music production ecosystem. And if you got any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comment section and I or other great iPad music producers will do our best to help you out. With all that said, it's iPad beat making. Peace.